Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create beautiful maps in Rhino. We're going to start by downloading the base data for our map and to do this we're going to be using Digimaps data service to acquire our basic mapping data. This website can be accessed from a variety of different university accounts and we're going to go to the Ordnance Survey tab and just go on the OS Digimap here to find our data. Now to do this we can click on the download data section of the map and then we're going to zoom in on the area that we want to acquire our data from. Now for this particular exercise I'm going to choose a site in the UK in the Lake District to download the data from but you can do it anywhere in the UK for Digimaps in particular has lots of data on different regions of the UK. Here. So once you've found the area that you'd like to get your data from we can then use the draw tool to draw out a section of the map for which the data we want to acquire and then down in the data products we can start to pick which parts of this map we want to download. For this I'm going to download the topography, the building height data and also the contour lines because this is a particularly mountainous site. Now usually it's just these three files that you need for your basic map but if you want to kind of have any other additional pieces you can also try downloading the other layers. However, the topography layer pretty much contains most of the mapping data you're going to need. So once we've got that, we're going to click Add to Basket. We're going to select the format, which is going to be a DWG in this case, which is just a standard drawing file. And we'll select the theme as standard. And once we've done that, we're going to hit the Request Download. And an email will be sent to our university email address for us to download this data. Now, once it's come in, it should look something like this. And we're going to have three files from which we can download our data from. One will be the topo standard, which is your topography data, your base mapping data. One will be your terrain and one will be your building heights. Now the building heights will actually be a little 3D model of the buildings. For this particular exercise, I don't need this data, so I'm gonna leave this out for now. But if you wanted to add three dimensional data into your mapping files, you can use that building heights file. Now we're gonna begin by opening up Rhino and importing our data in. To do this, we're going to go to File, Import, and then we're going to locate that data that we've got here. And we're going to start by loading in the topo standard to bring in that base mapping file and hit Open there. It will ask you some import options. We're going to keep these as standard and just hit OK there to bring that map into our file. Now what you'll find is it might take a bit of time depending on the size of the map and once it's brought in, we can't actually see it in our file. The reason for this is because the map is set to a world coordinate system, and so it's very unlikely that it will be at the 0, 0 coordinate point on your Rhino file. Therefore, in order to locate this, I usually just hit the Zoom Extents button in Rhino, and it will just center any map data we have onto the view we've got active. And I'm going to just look at this in the top view for now. There we can deselect, and here we can see we've got our map data that have come in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to bring in any other data I need. For this I'm just going to bring in my terrain data and we're just going to bring in these extra DWGs here to add to our terrain data here. And we have to bring these one at a time but you'll see because they're also world located they should drop in straight on top of our map here so we can overlay our contour lines with our base mapping data. So I'm just going to bring in these four you might find that there are a bit more data than you actually require, i.e. they're kind of going off the side of your map, which is fine for now, we can always crop this down later. So there we have our base contour lines and our base map data. Now we've got these in place, we're going to quickly format some of this data and just tidy it up a bit. If we open up our layers here, we'll just hide our named views and make this a bit larger. You can see that we've got a lot of layers in this file which have come in from Digimaps and a lot of these we probably won't need when we're using our kind of particular maps that we're doing. So just as a default I'll usually start off by kind of deleting out the base layers in our file, we don't need those. Then having a look at anything that says area on. For now I'm going to hide this, we might be bringing it back a bit later but I'm just going to hide that like so and then I'm also going to make a new layer, call it area. Oops. like so and we're going to move all of those area files just by selecting them all clicking and dragging into that area folder that way we've got all the areas contained in one folder there 
then I'm just going to make this a little bit wider so I can see the names. We've got some more areas in here, so let's just turn those off as well. And we'll move those into area. Then we've got all our lines. We'll do the same here. We're going to make a line folder. Move all of the lines in. There. And just close that folder. Now it might be some of these we don't need. It's kind of worth going through just turning on and off the ones you do and you don't need. But for now I'm going to keep those all on for the time being. We've got a few more lines here, so I'm going to move those in. Then we've got some boundaries. Then we've got all of these points. Now, the points aren't super useful. They're just kind of marking a tiny point on the map. Most of the time, I actually get rid of these. But for now, let's just select them all again. We're going to make a point folder first. Move all our points sort of into that point folder. and then just turn that off. We don't need that for the time being. And then we've got text down here as well and a few more points, so I'm just gonna move those in. And the text as well, I usually try and hide because most of the time I'll replace it with my own text or we'll kind of be a bit more selective because you'll see that Digimaps kind of labels every little thing on the map. And it might be for you that you don't need all of this text data. So usually the best way is just to hide it. So we've got a few more in here. We've got a few more contour lines. Let's put these in their own folder. Like so. And then spot heights can go in points. And then we've got a few that don't sort of fit the rest of them. So I'm just gonna call this additional map pieces. And let's just put the rest of these in there like so so now we've tidied up our map completely we've got a lot more kind of clear where all the pieces of the map are and we can turn these on and off when we need them and this really helps when we're starting to kind of format our map and starting to kind of add colors add line weights to this to make it and decorate it in the way that we want it to be displayed now what I'll do first before kind of working with any of these is I'm actually going to just turn back on my areas for the time being. Let's just turn all of these back on. I'm not going to use my kind of point or my text, so I don't need to worry about that now. And I'm just going to select all of the data we've got here just by clicking and dragging over the top of it. And I'm going to go into my properties window, which is the little rainbow window on the left here. In here you'll see that obviously the name and the type of the object varies and the layers they're on vary. But then we've got this display color, line type, print color and print width. Now to make this a lot easier we're going to set these all to by layer. And what that will mean is that the color that the objects are displayed, the line type which they have, the print color and the print width are all going to be controlled by the layer that those objects sit on. So it means I can tweak a layer i.e. my general line layer or my road layer and the line type of that layer will change accordingly. So by doing that you'll notice that suddenly everything's gone bright red. The reason for that is that Digimaps by default has all of its layers as a red colour so we won't be able to see the difference of these yet because they're all red. What would happen if I changed my building area to let's say a blue colour is now all my buildings are blue might be the same for my kind of static water area for example let's change that to a kind of light blue and there my water changes to blue as well so you can see we have complete control over all of those objects in the layers just by tweaking the color tweaking the line type and the print color etc so what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to pause the video and I'm just going to add a different color to each of the main kind of components in my map just to make it slightly easier to see and you can do this just by kind of going down in your little color block here and just set a new color for each of these particular layers. Now you can see I've added a kind of random color to each of these points in my layers so we can now differentiate between some of the key areas in this and clearly see them in our drawing. Now these aren't going to be the final colors of my map, these are purely just so I can start to kind of differentiate the buildings from the roads from the green spaces on here. And we're actually going to apply a specific color scheme in a second to this map. 
Now before we do that, I'm first going to set up my drawing that I want to export this map out. It might be that you want to have this as an A2 drawing page or an A3 or an A1 page that you want to print or draw over the top of. So we're going to start by setting that out at a certain scale so we can have that map kind of set up on a layout sheet. To do this, I'm going to click the plus icon at the bottom of the map, set new layout. We're going to call this map. I'm going to do Rhino PDF and we're going to do a portrait A2 size. Now the printer purely means how you're going to export it and I want to export it as a PDF drawing from here so we're going to set that printer as Rhino PDF. We'll hit OK and there you'll see we've got this kind of A2 portrait sheet with our map in the center. Now we need to do if we double click in that frame you'll see it goes a slightly darker gray which means we're now in the model space and I can zoom in to my map to kind of center it this page. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make my frame a little bit smaller just by selecting that outline, picking up those bottom points and we're just going to pull it upwards. This gives me some space at the bottom here for any labels, north markers, any kind of titles or notes I want to put on my map and in here we're going to then set the scale of this map to be an accurate architectural scale. To do that we can click on the frame of the map, go into the properties and here we have our scale value. Now sometimes the scale is quite tricky to kind of understand or work out exactly which scale you're at, but essentially we've got millimeters on the page equal to meters in the model. So if we have one millimeter on a page and one meter in the model, this essentially is a kind of one to 1000 scale map. If we do one millimeter on the page, 10 meters on the model, it will be a 1 to 10,000 scale. So as you can see, 10,000 is a bit small, 1,000 is a bit big, so I'm going to try 1 to 5. I think that's about right there. And we can always double click in the map and use the pan tool just to kind of pan this round to get the exact area that we want. And I think that should do for the time being. Once we've got that, we can always lock that scale in just by hitting lock here. So we've locked it in, but you can do any scale you want, whichever scale your map is kind of accurate at or wants to fit at, then you can set that here. So now we've got our scale locked, we've got our map kind of in place. We can now begin to format this map to actually make it look convincing, display the particular information we want to display and be a kind of accurate record of what we're trying to depict in this project. So to do that, we're going to first start by going back to our top view. From here we need to ask ourselves what the primary focus of our map is going to be. In the case of this map I'm going to focus it on the lake that's in the centre of this piece which means we're going to want to kind of colour and line weight our map to give focus to that primary objective of what we're trying to communicate. It's really important with any map or drawing we make that it's got a very clear form of communication and we're using the colours, the line weights and the way we kind of describe and show the map in order to communicate that particular piece of information. So from this point I'm going to basically strip off any bits of information I feel like I don't need for this map. For this I'm going to start with the areas and I'm going to take away a few of these areas here. So I'm actually going to start by just hiding all of them and then we're going to bring back the ones we do need because there'll probably be more here that I don't want than I do. So obviously water's important for this particular map so we're going to turn on that static water area we're also going to have a look and see if there are any other water areas that's a kind of inland water area but I don't think that is actually applying in this case I can't see it on the map in here I'm also going to turn on the building areas which are going to show my buildings and then potentially some of these surfaces we've got our kind of multi-surface perhaps our road area could be useful roadside we're not going to have that one on and maybe the general surface area it might be that we also want some of these kind of green areas as well in which case let's have a look at our vegetation area we'll turn that on and maybe our agricultural land and i think those will probably be enough for now in there just to kind of give a sense of our main kind of bits of landscape that we want to show in this so for that once i've got those i'm just going to turn off the areas so i can clearly see the lines we'll turn off contours now as well so we can see these other lines and we're going to do the same thing for our line work so we're just going to go through here turn off all of our lines so we can't see them and then turn on the ones we need now I can see now I've turned these lines off I've got these boundary lines on here which are on my additional map pieces so I'm going to turn those off too and we're going to turn back on our general line which is our kind of general line work across here 
we obviously want our water line there we want our building outlines which we're going to show we want the road lines building divisions are quite useful and the general surface line but I think other than that I don't really need any of these other ones I by all means kind of go through have a look and see what these are and see if you need them but sometimes stripping back layers of data can be more useful to help keep your maps clear and the information clear that you're trying to show now for the last one we're just going to turn back on the contours and I'm going to have my contour lines both turned on with my ordinary contour line and my master contour line here which show those kind of two levels because it's important. I want to show the kind of topography of the surrounding site in this particular area. So now we have our kind of key map features and we're going to turn those all on so we can see them. Once we've got that, I'm going to go back to my layout file, which is found at the bottom here under map. Here, we're going to turn on something called our print display. And this will allow us to see what the map will actually look like when we print it. You'll see in my layers, if I kind of open these up slightly, that we have not only our kind of general layers but we also have our kind of line type print width displayed and our print color of these layers so what this will mean is that we've got a color that they're being displayed as and we've also got a color they're being printed as now currently those colors are the same but i can actually tweak those to be completely different colors if i want to so we can have a different color it's printing and a different color it's displaying for example if we just set these now to just be sort of shades of gray here when we turn on our print display mode you'll see that these colors will start to change in order to display the print color rather than the display color now in order to do this we can type in print display into our command line which is found here and we're going to turn the state to on instead of off once that's on we can hit enter and you see now that the colors are now matching the print color instead of the display color the reason we don't usually have these two colors the same is it might be that when you're working on your map you actually want to kind of clearly see the difference between some of these points but then when you're printing the map you might want the colors to be the same or you might want the lines to all have the same tone for example so it's quite useful to keep them as different color tones while we're working on them now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to apply a color scheme to this map and to do that i'm going to find a color scheme on the internet i'm using colorhunt.com for this and I'm going to be using this color scheme here to apply it to the map. On this website we've got kind of RGB values of these colors and I think when you're looking for particular color schemes especially for maps it's always good to think what you're presenting. If you're trying to present water it might be that you want a kind of greeny or bluey color for that and it also might be that you want some accent colors to highlight other particular things on your maps. For this, I'm going to be using this color scheme because we've got a nice strong accent color, but then also have these more neutral tones, which we can use for the landscape and vegetation. So from here, we're going to think, OK, which colors do we want to apply to which parts of our project? I'm going to be using this kind of lighter blue and darker blue here for the water and the landscape. So I think we'll use the darker blue for the water and we're just going to copy this RGB value onto our Rhino farm. So we're going to find that static water area going to go here and then we're going to use this to kind of interpret our RGB value here now you might want to go for your RGB slider to set that and then we can type in our value in there so it's a 106 156 137 so it's a 106 156 and then 137 here and that will kind of give us that water look that we're going for and all I'm going to do is I'm going to just take these colors and we're going to just apply them onto my print colors in this file for both our areas and also our line types. So I'm going to pause the video, apply those colors, and then we're going to come back and see what this map is looking like. We've now finished adding in our color tones. And as you can see, we're kind of getting there with our map, but we still need to correct these line weights to make them balance in with the rest of the drawing. You see, I've used my accent color here to pick out the road network that we've got. On our path we've got the kind of darker blue for the water and then we've been using a shades of this kind of lighter greens that kind of nice beige color and a gray to pick out the buildings now currently all my lines are the same thickness and i want to tweak this in order to kind of show different lines to be more important than others so what we're going to do is we're going to begin with our contour lines and these ones actually want to be a lot thinner than they're currently showing so under print width we're just going to find the line and we're going to switch this to a kind of 0.1 of a millimeter so it's very thin 
in both of these cases for these lines. It might be for the master line you want to have slightly thicker because that happens every five meters as opposed to every meter. So it's a slightly thicker line here. And also what we're gonna do to these is under the line type, we're gonna change this to a dotted line. Now by default, Rhino comes it built in with different types of dotted line. We've got hidden, we've got dashed, and these might be kind of different thicknesses. So you can see my hidden lines kind of dashing every couple of millimeters or so. If we want to make that a slightly tighter dash, we can go up to file, under properties, go to our line types here, and we can create brand new line types just by hitting add, calling this my contour line, for example. And we can type in whatever dash we want here. And this is defined by typing in a number followed by a comma and then another number. So we're going to do one comma one. And that will do a dash of one millimeter followed by a gap of a millimeter. If we want a bigger gap, we can change the second number to make that gap larger. So you can have any kind of combination of numbers here to give you a certain dash line. And once we've done that, I'm going to go back to my contour lines. We'll change that to our new contour here. And there you can see that dash is a bit tighter there. I think for the hidden one, we're gonna make actually this a sort of thicker line here. We'll make this continuous so you can kind of clearly see it. So you can kind of have whatever sort of um, variation of dash and dot you want. I think with these, I'm also gonna make these a lighter gray here just by lowering that opacity down, just so they're not as prominent on my map like so. So they kind of fade in a bit. We're going to do the same with our building line. So the building outline, I'm actually going to make this a slightly thicker line, 0.25, so it's slightly fatter, and we're going to keep that as continuous. And we're just going to go around and quickly just sort of vary some of these lines to be thicker or slimmer to kind of display different information. For our road line here, because I'm making this kind of an orange color, I'm actually going to make the line also an orange color to help define and make that line a bit brighter. So you can see there, by doing that, that just kind of removes that outline from there. And we might have some lines, like some of these points where we're kind of crossing over the water where we want to make them dotted as well. So you can just go around tweaking the kind of thickness of some of these lines, just kind of bringing them in line with kind of the map or the certain look that you want to have on your particular map here. So now we're kind of getting to a point where I'm getting quite happy with my map. Once you've got to a point you're happy with and we've got the kind of colors in place, the last thing we need to do is just add any labels and extra bits to our map. The first thing I'm going to add is a grid on top of this whole map to give it a sense of scale and to allow you to kind of read the detail and scale on this particular map. To do this, we're going to go back in the top view and I'm going to draw out a grid on a new layer in this view. Now, depending on the kind of scale of your map, and the size that you're kind of showcasing. This grid might be a different dimension. For this particular map, I'm gonna draw my grid at a 500 meter spacing. So we're gonna do this by creating a new layer, which we're gonna call grid here. In this layer, we're just gonna draw out a line, which is gonna be the first line on our grid. You can see that my files now slowed down a little bit because we've got quite a lot of information in this map. You might find this if you've got quite large mapping files like mine, that yours is sort of slightly slower than it was usually, but it usually speeds up once we start drawing. So we're gonna do this at 500 meter spacing, like so. And then we're just gonna copy this down here to create our grid, like so. So let's just create a grid across the bottom here, just down across our map. And once we've made that, we can create a copy. And then we're just gonna rotate that 90 degrees form our grid like so and this is more of an aesthetic thing we're adding in just to give us a kind of overlay on our drawing back on our map file we can have a look and see what that looks like and there we can add a kind of color so I'm going to make this a kind of grayish line here and we're going to make it quite thin we'll do it a 0 0.1 so we can have that sort of overlaid on top of our drawing like so once we've done that, we can also add some other elements. I usually like to add a north marker on my drawing. I'm gonna do this on its own layer as well. And for this, you can draw these in kind of any different way you want to. For mine, 
I'm just going to draw it as a circle here. We're going to move it to a kind of align with the side of our drawing, like so. Up slightly. And we're just going to put a sort of single straight line from that center point out to the edge of our drawing, like so here. Now it might be with this that you want to give this particular line weight as well. Let's make this a kind of gray color again. Make our kind of line weight on this sort of 0 0.25. Now it might be you want this line to be slightly thicker in this case. So I'm actually going to change the properties of this line itself to for its line type not to be by layer, but just to be a kind of particular line type and print width that we want to choose. So let's choose this as a kind of 0 0.6, let's say, or maybe a little bit more. We could do a 0 0.1 or 1. So it's a slightly thicker line. So it's just pointing in that north direction. You also might want to add a key, add any labels to this map as well. So I'm just going to pause the video and quickly add in a kind of title, a key and some labels, just so we can see what our final map looks like. Here you can see I've just added a simple title and a scale bar onto this. And you can also add any other information that might be relevant to your map. Now, as a final thing, once we've kind of completed our map and we're happy with the colors we've added, we can now export this out as a PDF to see what this looks like. Often when we export it, the line weights and the look of the map might be slightly different to what you could see on Rhino because Rhino slightly scales its lines when you're viewing the map. So it's always good to do a print just to check what the actual final look of the map looks like. So we select print, we find Rhino PDF, we make sure the size matches the size of our page and the layout looks correct. And once we've got that, we hit print and it will save it out as a PDF. I'm just going to save this as map three here and we'll let that save. Now this is finished exporting, we can open this up and there we can see our kind of final map here. If we zoom out slightly, we have our kind of titles and labels on it. And you can see here our line weights are coming out correctly. We have our slightly thicker line for our building and then our thinner dotted lines for our contours and the outline of our water. So that was just a tutorial on how to create maps how to format the lines and add a color scheme to maps in Rhino. Hope you found this video useful and for any other videos on creating drawings, 3D modeling and visualizing in Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.